Hey guys, I wanted to touch on this subject once because this is something that I didn't really understand much when I started in whether you want to use the term investing or trading. Um, so I wanted to touch on this and tell you how this can affect us both in stocks and options trading. And that's the bid and the ask price of a stock or of an option. Now I'm gonna give you the technical definition of these words, and I'm gonna give you what I've found over the years in my experience. So bid price refers to the highest price that traders are willing to pay for a security. The ask price, on the other hand, refers to the lowest price that the owners of that security are willing to sell it for. Now, that's the te technical definition. However, I found it to be a little bit of the opposite. And we're going to start with in regards to stocks. So I'm using an example here. We want to buy Paycom software. And if we look at the price for Paycom, it's $178.56 a share. If we look at the bid price, it's $178 and 48 cents now this if we looked at our definition we said that that's the most that people are willing to pay who want to buy it we look at the ask price it's 178.65 and our definition said that's the most that people who are willing to sell it are willing to receive. In my experience, and bear in mind, Uncle Dwayne is impatient. I don't like waiting for things. If I'm buying something, I want to receive it immediately. I don't want to have to wait a half an hour or two hours or hopefully things work out. I want to buy it now. I want to buy it now. Well, if I want to buy it now, if I wanted to buy 10 shares of Paycom right now and I was seeing this and I saw the ask price was $178.65, that's, I would make a limit order, not, not now. There is a limit order and there's a market order. If you put down a market order, they sell it to you at whatever price is available. What that means is if people push the price up in those next few minutes and you get filled at that higher price, you get filled at that higher price. Meaning, if the stock you saw it at $178 and 56 cents but it moved up suddenly to $179.50 that's what they would fill you at but if you change the order type to limit you can tell them exactly how much you're willing to pay for that price and i find that if i change the mark the order type to limit and I put in the ask price of a stock, I get filled immediately. There's no waiting around. But if I put in order type limit and I put the bid price, 178.48, I may not get filled for an hour, two hours, three hours. And if the stock keeps moving up, 
and doesn't come back down, I may never get filled. So if I want to make sure I'm getting that stock and I'm getting it at a fair price, I just set the order type to limit and then I put the ask price. And in this case, the price for the stock is 178.56. The ask price is 178.65. So it's only nine cents above the ask price. It's per share, but it's only nine cents above the ask price. It's not a great thing or a big thing. Now let's go to the next one. Bid and ask with options, because that's where it makes a difference. And the reason it makes a difference when it comes to options is because with options, they always represent a hundred shares. And I'm going to show you how that works out. So first off, with options, I see bid and ask up here, but the bid and ask up here that I'm seeing is for the stock. It's not for the option. If I come down here, I see bid, mid, and ask. That's what I'm looking for. That's the bid and the ask for the option. So the bid for the option is $13.90, but I have to realize that with an option, it always represents 100 shares. So 13.90 times 100, which is move the decimal place over two digits, is 13.90. That's $1,390. Now, you guys, those who are familiar with options, you may be wondering why the option prices that I speak about on this channel are so large. And the reason for that is because I don't believe in cheap, short expiration um out of the money options i want an option that's at least at the money meaning that the stock is a hundred and seventy eight dollars and the option is for a hundred and eighty dollars strike price it's almost right there it's at the money and options that are months away in length. This option has to be at least three months, four months out, right? We're at the end of November, and this option is all the way into February. But if you're going to get at the money or in the money options with longer expirations, those are going to cost money. So, the bid price on this option is $1,390. What does that mean? That means if you had 100 shares of Paycom in your portfolio and you decided that you was going to sell this option, you can make $1,390 for selling it. But if you wanted to buy a, an option for this, a three-month three option with at the money, it would cost you $1,430. Because it's one price to buy it, another price to sell it. Now, you can also try the mid price. And the mid price, you may get filled, but it may take a little bit longer. It's not going to be immediate. 
But if you want it to be immediate, you put the ask price. When I'm looking to buy an option, one of the main things I'm looking at is the difference between the ask and the bid price. The difference between the ask and the bid price in this case is $40. I can deal with that. Maybe $50, I can deal with that. Because options, when they go right, the percentages they move up in a day can be pretty high. Even though when they go wrong, the percentages they move down in a day can be pretty high. But you don't want a situation where it may cost you $900 to buy an option. And then when you look back at the bid price, it costs you or you, you'll end up being able to sell it back for like $600. That's a $300 spread. And what that means is that if you buy this option right now for $900 and then decide, you know what, I made a mistake. Let me sell this back. You'll only be able to sell it for $600. What that means is that in a minute, you've just lost $300. And what it also means is, if you're convinced that this stock is going to move up, you have to be profitable over $300 just to make a profit. If you make $300 on that option, you'll just break even. So you don't want to buy an option with a wide bid and ask price. You want to look at the bid and the ask. If it's around $40, $50 with options, that is pretty decent because you're not going to find too tight a bid and ask spread when it comes to options. Now, when it comes to stocks, you may find five cents. Nine, we just saw nine cents, but you may find five cents, three cents, two cents, whatever. But with options, if it's a $50 spread, okay. If it's around 100 or below, you have to use your own judgment. I can't tell you what to do in that situation. But if it's a huge spread, I don't even bother. I don't mess with the option for that. I'll just mess with the stock or I'll move on to something else. Right? Um, another thing that I should mention, and this can be with options or stocks, but particularly with stocks. I'm going to go back here to the stocks. You're finding more platforms now that are using extended hours trading. Extended hours meaning you can buy stocks before 9.30 a.m. You can buy stocks after 4.30 p.m. One thing you have to be aware of with extended hours trading is what are the bid and ask prices. We're looking here at Paycom. Between the the um between the stock's price and the ask is nine cents. And between the Stock's price and the bid is what, eight cents? Okay. But when you switch into extended hours trading, the difference between that stock price 
and the bid or that stock price and the ask, it may be a dollar. It may be a dollar fifty. Those bid and ask are all over the place in extended hours trading. And they don't normalize until it gets back into the traditional 9.30 to 4.30 market day. So if you're going to be trying to buy things in extended hours and taking advantage of opportunities in extended hours, you really have to look at bid and ask price. And you definitely don't want to be making market purchases during that time. You want your order type to be limit, and you're specifying exactly how much you're willing to pay. And if you're seeing a big gap between the stock price and the ass price, just leave it alone. Wait a few hours until the market opens. Or if it's after hours, wait until the next day. So that's my little input on bid and ass prices, guys. And you have a great day, and I'll speak to you in the next video.